What's up, everybody? How are you today? Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Who has the first question? Connor, I wanted to start with you. It's, uh, it's clear that you've got a much different energy about you this week and the way you're handling things, a much different approach to the fight week, the fight itself. I'm just curious if you can pinpoint the moment that you realize, like, I've got to make a change. I've got to do this much differently than I did last time out. You know, I have not changed too much, to be honest. I am who I am. I've always been. I'm still... I don't think I've changed too much throughout it, you know? Granted, different opponents, different circumstances, but I'm just... I'm in a position right now where I'm very, very excited to be here, and I'm, I'm very eager to, to, to perform for the fans on January 18th. I've got a solid opponent in front of me and uh, a veteran of the game, and I'm just in a good spot, and that's it. I don't think I've changed or altered or, or you know, uh, I'm just committed and focused and happy to be here, M mostly like I always have been. Connor, d during the time away that you had, I mean, obviously you had the legal concerns and everything that was going against you. I just wonder, was there ever a thought in all that maybe you wouldn't be allowed to come back and fight? Or maybe you didn't even want to come back and fight and have to come, you know, deal with the hassle, deal with the headaches when obviously you've got plenty of money in the bank, I would imagine. You would imagine correct. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very, very grateful and very, I'm just very honored and happy to be, to be here on U.S. soil, back on United States soil, back here in Las Vegas. I've had, so, I've had so many amazing moments here. My life has changed here in America, you know, so I'm very grateful for this country and I'm very honored to be here and to perform for the people, you know. I'm an entertainer, a, you know, a fighter and an entertainer, and to come here and entertain these people is something that, gets me up in the morning, so I'm very happy. And Connor, you've laid out big plans for 2020, the 2020 season as you're uh, calling it. I'm just curious, I mean, are you able to say beyond a shadow of doubt, legal troubles, everything, it's all hashed out, there's no potential roadblocks or hurdles that might pop up and, and slow down this, this plan for you? <laughs> Guys, I have done nothing wrong here. I'm in, I'm in a good spot, I am ready to fight. I am... I am setting out for big goals. I'm gonna kickstart UFC's 2020 year big, and I'm gonna continue it, you know? It's gonna be a mega year here uh, at the UFC and, and at McGregor Sports and Entertainment, you know that. <laughs> uh, but I'm very happy. I have a lot of, a lot of exciting things in, in the pipeline, and it's, it's damn good to be back. It's damn good. And just one more for Connor. I, I know that you've got a lot of respect for Cowboy and, as you said, different circumstances, but I'm sure everybody here would appreciate uh, the Mystic Mac prediction of how exactly you get this thing done. You know, I've had, I've had my back and forth with Donald throughout the years, right? The last time we spoke to each other, or even saw each other, would have been at that press conference many years ago. So much has changed since then, right? I was the interim featherweight world champion at the time. Uh, Donald predicted Al I wouldn't get through Aldo. I got through Aldo. He predicted I was too small for the 155-pound division. I conquered that division. You know, we've had a good back and forth, myself and Donald. And as time has gone on, you know, he's become a family man. I've, I, obviously, you've seen him compete so much, so many times. It's hard not to respect Donald right now at this stage, and he has my respect. And, and although there will be blood spilled on January 18th, it will not be bad blood. And for the Mystic Mac prediction, it will be a KO. <laughs> You said yesterday that you didn't quite get the red panty night you were hoping for that was out there. So I, I'm curious, if you didn't quite get the big paycheck that you thought was coming, um, what, what does this fight mean to you? Oh, no, you, you were mincing my words. You told me, Connor said he made 80 million, and I said, well, fucking good for him. That's awesome. He wants to send a little bit of that grease my way. That'd be pretty <laughs> badass. But this is the fight I wanted. This is the I'm not complaining at all, man. I'm fucking here to have a good time. My like Connor said, we're entertainers, man, so we're here to fucking entertain, blow the roof off this motherfucker. And just one last one for me, Cal. Well, you keep saying, I keep hearing you say, I'm gonna stand and trade, I'm gonna give the fans the fight that they, they want to see, but I mean, a lot of us believe that your jujitsu is probably superior. Can you tell us where jujitsu or grappling ranks somewhere in the game plan? Like, is it, is it plan B or is it is anywhere in there? For all you analysts and experts that are asking these questions, you would be fucking stupid to think this man doesn't have a wrestling defense or some kind of grappling defense. So for me just to walk in and be like, oh, I'm gonna just take him down and submit him, get a fucking real life, man. We gotta go in there, we gotta fight our asses off. That's what's gotta happen. This is obviously a welterweight bout, and I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but both Kamaru Usman and Jorge Masvidal are here uh, and will be in attendance of a fight. 
Those are two of the biggest fights in the welterweight division right now, and which one of those two fights would potentially interest you more? Hmm, you know, that's, that's an interesting one. Who would in, who, what would I be interested in more? I mean, I, I'd take both, you know, I'd have both. I would like that bad motherfucker tile, that, that belt, and then I'd like the gold. You know, for me, the gold is a bit more, has a bit more significance to it, especially since the way the, the BMF fight finished. I thought we were robbed of a classic contest there. I thought it was only kicking into gear rounds four and five. Um, but they're both exciting uh, bouts. I'd say probably the more exciting of the bout would probably be myself versus Jorge from a stylistic standpoint. Uh, Huseman kind of has the similar style of, of, of Habib, you know, the, the sniff the jockstrap style. So, uh, I mean, I'm interested for both, you know. We'll see what happens. I'm enjoying myself at 170. I'm underweight right now, so I feel good. I feel energetic, light, fast, accurate, and, and, and precise. So I feel good here. Okay, and last one. Hey, a couple quick questions uh, for Connor about um, your legal issues. Uh, real quick, Connor, what can you tell us? Yeah, we're here. We're here to talk about a fight. Nothing he does outside of fighting. Why? Why yeah. everyone got to keep going there? The, the rest of the week is fight questions. I promise. Why but, does everyone hey, gotta ask that shit? He answered shit? these questions yeah, yesterday on that. ESPN. Right? He answered these questions can yesterday. Can you tell us anything specifically about the status of the allegations yeah. in Ireland? He, he answered that yesterday on ESPN. And was there any? Was there ever a point where you guys were concerned that that might imperil this fight? Was I? Either of you. No. Uh, just a question over here. Connor, you spoke about the Australian marker. We see Dana's got that awesome t-shirt on with the Australian, flat, uh, the Australian map there. Talk to us a little bit about why that marker is so significant to you and what they sort of mean to you along with New Zealand. Yeah, what's going on in Australia is, is heartbreaking at the minute, and New Zealand, um, and New South Wales. I have many friends, many Irish people are, are over there, and it's very, very sad to see, and it's, I'm very proud to be, to be assisting with the UFC in, in their efforts in, 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 in helping. And also, what, a thing I do for, for Proper 12, we, we support first responders in, in America currently, right? So we've reached a, a, a threshold where we're donating a million dollars per, per annum to first responders, so we're currently vetting uh, organizations uh, to, to donate this, this revenue, and uh, we have an, a nice announcement after the fight, but since this stuff has, hap has begun in Australia, I have, I have uh, shifted focus now, and we're, we're working now to aid um, the Australian fire, uh, fighters also, and the first responders out there, so it means a lot, and I, I, I know Australia's a strong nation, I know they will fight on and, and, and conquer this, and the world is with them, so Godspeed, Australia. Just quickly on Australia, we've obviously got a new champion in Alex Volkanovski. A lot of people are wondering, would you see a sort of pathway to you coming back down and possibly fighting him for that featherweight title? Uh, maybe it's a little too much, although I'd never say never, you know. I, I, I made 153 against Floyd. I'm comfortably, comfortably floating just, uh, just under 170 now. I could make 155 handy. I could do it whether I would or not. Probably not for, 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 for uh, Alex at this, at this time, certainly. I'd, I'd be interested to see the rematch between him and Max. thought it was a good fight. Um, Australia's, the rise of Australia right, is phenomenal. I mean, we've got I Israel Adesanya. I know he's a New Zealander. And then we've got Robert Whittaker. So it's great to see the Aussies and the New Zealanders rising up in the sport. They're phenomenal fighters and um, exciting times. All right. Hey, Dana, for you, last one. I mean, for years you've talked about being the biggest sport in the world, and, and throughout the years we've talked about the ESPN deal and the sale. And what a way to start the year with Connor coming back and the potential to top last year, which you said was the biggest year. What are your expectations for 2020, starting it off with a fight like this? Yeah, uh, usually the, uh, the, you know, we, we always end the year with uh, a big New Year's fight, and November's always big, and September, and January's usually the, the, the slowest time of the year for us. So to, to, to kick this year off, coming off the most incredible year ever, um, with a fight like this is awesome. It's fun. You know, we even had a big gap there where we, where we didn't have some fights and had some time off. So to, to start January like this is it's awesome. I'm excited for Saturday, too. Question for Cowboy. A lot of the narrative going into this fight is about what Connor's going to do after, after he beats you. Are you all feeling overlooked by the general public and the media? No, not at all. I mean, that's what this dude does. He goes, he's the best at talking and selling fucking fights. So, uh, 
I don't think he's overlooking me at all. He knows exactly who he has standing in front of him, and he's trained and he's ready. And uh, oh, I don't give a fuck about the media. I just care about this dude right here. Yeah. And a uh, question for Connor. It's uh, been in November. It'll be four years since you last got, uh, tasted victory. Are you all feeling under pressure to get an effective win and get back in the win column? No, I don't feel pressure, you know. Pressure creates diamonds, they say, so I'm very excited to be in this position, very well prepared. Um, that narrative, you know, I've, I've lost once unavenged inside the UFC's octagon. The other defeat was in a boxing ring under a specific set of rules, and so the narrative of that is a little far-fetched, but um, I'm well prepared. I'm going to put on a phenomenal show this Saturday, and that's it. Sit back and enjoy. And, uh Question for Dana. Um, can you give us any update on the main event for UFC London now? I know there was talks between Tyron Woodley and Leon Edwards. What's the status of that fight? Still working on it. We're still working on it. As soon as it's done, we'll let you guys know. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. You mentioned how 2019 was the biggest year ever. If Connor is able to complete the season, fight three times this year, how big can 2020 be business wise for the should, UFC? It should be damn good. Yeah. You know, if, if Connor does compete that many times this year, plus you have the big uh, Khabib Tony fight that's going to happen, the John Jones fight's going to happen, and the list goes on and on. And whatever could happen after these fights happen, it's, yeah, it'd be good. So, sounds good to me. What do you think is the most dangerous element of Cowboys' game? Uh, you know, I can read Donald, you know, I, I like him a lot, he's a good guy, but I can read it. I can read Donald like a children's book, to be honest, you know, he's a good, he's a good fighter, he's got some good tricks up his sleeve, I know, I know the tricks he has, and I know what he's planning and what he, um, what he hopes to achieve, but we are well prepared, and, you know, we'll see on the night, it's going to be a good night. And to bounce that back to you, Cowboy, do you, is there any tricks up your sleeve for Saturday night? Oh man, he can read me, so we'll see, hopefully, uh... <laughs> Hopefully he's got some hooked on phonics. We'll see what's going on. I don't know. Earlier today, the Schmo talked to Manny Pacquiao's management. They're interested in doing a bout with you here in Las Vegas, here at Raider Stadium. Would a Manny Pacquiao match get precedent over a Floyd Mayweather rematch? Hmm, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. I would love that. I would love that Floyd rematch. I thought I'd done. For what, for what was in front of me, I thought I'd done very well. I thought of some slight adjustments. I'd have done even better. So I feel now I could, I could take that victory. Um, the Manny Pacquiao, that, that, the talks have been ongoing in that. And for me, an aspiration of mine now also is to win a boxing world title. I think that would be a phenomenal feather in the cap and something I, I look to achieve in the future. And it's something I will achieve. You know, I'm back with my boxing coaches at Crumlin Boxing Club where I learned how to, to throw a punch. They've sat me down on my punches and we've cleaned up some things and I'm feeling really confident in my boxing abilities and um, it'd be an honor to come back into boxing and who knows, maybe I will kickstart stuff for boxing if we can get, if we can get there. This one, uh, this one for Connor. Uh, Dana said earlier this week that you don't believe that the Tony Khabib fight is actually going to happen uh, coming up in April and you'd be ready for that if someone, if someone drops out. Is that, is that accurate? Hey, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, look, what look at history, right? They, they were scheduled to fight four times, um, or four or five times, or something. Multiple pullouts on both sides. Even Habib was supposed to fight Donald multiple times. Pulled out, I believe, three times. Something wrong with the, something with his blood and something. Four times. Something, four times, you know. So they're known for not making that walk. So that would be an accurate statement that I would have made to Dana. Yes. And and there's um, a fight card coming up here in March. There's no main event yet. Things go okay on, on Saturday. Yes. Can you possibly come yes. turn around quickly? Yes, yes. God willing, we come out here safe um, from this bout Saturday night. Most certainly, March would be would be well uh, attainable. And who who would that be? You think? Line them fucking up. I I do not give it. I couldn't care. Any weight, any division, any anything. I am in I am in prime condition and ready to go. And then Dana, I guess same question. Is that a possibility? There's no main event yet for that card in March here in Vegas. Could it be Conor McGregor or maybe even Cowboy Cerrone on uh, headlining that one? Anything is possible. Let's see what happens on Saturday. And is that that's the fight card that that it was supposed to be Adesanya versus Romero, and that hasn't come together yet? Is that is that accurate? Yeah, that's the Adesanya fight. And what's the status of that? Being worked on. Fair enough. And uh, Kamaru Usman and Jorge Masvidal are going to be in town this week. They're going to be at media day tomorrow. 
anything to read into about those two? No, nah, that just, that's just the way it played out. They, they just both happen to be in town. It has nothing to do with any fighting or anything like that. Last, last quick, quick one for Cowboy. Cowboy, many people say that you really prefer when uh, there's no bad blood and when there is respect and when there is, you know, that kind of camaraderie. And a lot of people say when there isn't, it bothers you. Is there any truth to that? Does it matter to you if people? No, are it's just you media guys making bullshit up, just like they say. Oh, you cut! If you hug Cowboy in the ring, you're gonna get knocked out. So give me a big old ass hug when we get in there, all right? <laughs> but now there's no truth. I, th we're just professionals. Why can't we? Why can't? Why can't Connor sit here and hold himself like he's doing? Right? This is fucking amazing. Are you kidding me? I mean, you guys aren't getting the clickbait and all the shit you all want. But as a man, my hat's off to the son bitch for sitting here. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right, we'll do one more. You got a question? Yeah. Go ahead, buddy. Ocho Cinco here on behalf of Bleacher <laughs> Report. Hey, this question's for Connor. <laughs> Blinging over there. Hey, this, hey, this question's for... All right. Hey, this question's for Connor. This is my first UFC presser. Excellent. Saturday Welcome. Will, Welcome. Saturday will be my first UFC match. Excellent. I'm not a gambling man, but if there was an event where I would bet the house, it would be this Saturday. I want to know before I bet this money, <laughs> before I bet this money, is it, how confident are you in Saturday's fight? Welcome to the best show on earth, the Ultimate Fighting Championship. We're honored to have you, sir. Um, I'm extremely confident, if you can't tell. I'm coming in with, 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 with full preparation, full commitment, and full confidence in my, in my striking abilities and my shots. And who knows, maybe a submission, but I'm gonna be going for the knockout. <laughs>